Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and yesterday's Apple event was one that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. So I wanted to talk a little bit about everything they announced and also give you my thoughts on the new MacBook Pro. So a lot of different videos have already been out, and so a bunch of you have been asking me what I think of the new MacBook Pro, but the first thing is Apple released the Apple Cloth. The Apple cloth is available now to purchase separately from the Pro Display XDR. And it has a little Apple in the corner. It's $19 on the Apple website. And no, I didn't order one. I have this one from the Pro Display XDR. It's pretty nice, but it's actually not my favorite. So it does feel great, but it has kind of a creak to it when you kind of clean a screen. You'll see what I mean if you did order one. Now, as far as things they announced, the first thing was Apple Music and Siri. They announced a couple different things as far as playlists and things you can do now with Siri, but then also a new Siri subscription model. So for just $4.99 a month, you can now get all of the different Apple Music songs and playlists and all of those things, but those are now activated with Siri only. And so instead of using the visual interface, I thought maybe this was a way for accessibility users to maybe have a cheaper subscription since they're not getting all the visual benefits. So it's nice if you want to use that $4.99 for your devices. Now, Apple then announced new HomePod mini colors. So instead of just the black and white colors or space gray and white, you now have yellow, blue, and sort of an orange color as well. They look pretty good and will match around the house if you wanted something that matches a little better other than just neutral tones. We then heard about new AirPods. Apple announced AirPods third generation at the event, and they look just like what many people had said they look like. They basically look like an AirPod Pro if you remove the tip off of the end of it. So if you remove that, that's what it looks like. It looks just like an AirPod Pro and has all of the features of the AirPods Pro, but without noise cancellation and transparency. Since it doesn't seal in your ear with the AirPod tip, you don't need the transparency or noise cancellation, but you get the benefits of spatial audio and it's $179. So it's what you would expect, but it also has better battery life. So Apple says five minutes of charge will give you an hour of use and total you'll get six hours of listening time. And then if you use the case, you'll be able to charge it an additional four times. So 30 hours total, that's using it in regular situations. And that's pretty good. I think before we were getting about four to five hours. So an extra hour to two hours should be pretty nice. Now, the big thing was the Mac. The 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro were finally announced. Many of us thought this would be available in June at WWDC and there were production delays due to its display. So let's quickly go over all of the different things that are new and then I'll give you my opinion on it. Now, the first thing is the M1 Pro. They went over the chipsets for quite some time the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and I keep thinking M1 Extreme, but maybe that'll come later. It just keeps popping into my head and I keep mistaking the M1 Max for the M1 Extreme for some reason. I think I saw that somewhere else. And the first thing is it's a little bit heavier this year. If you have the 16 inch, this is the last generation 16 inch. The new one is slightly heavier, 4.3 pounds up to 4.7 pounds. So before it was 4.3, now it's 4.7 or 2.1 kilograms. So it's fairly heavy but it gains a lot that the other one doesn't have. So we finally got those ports that we've wanted. HDMI only at 2.0 is what some people are saying, as well as Thunderbolt 4 ports. We have three of those, and we also have an SD card slot along with MagSafe. So all of those things, they kind of reversed what they did before, brought back all of those ports, and that should be really great. Now, as far as the ports are concerned, I won't use any of them except the SD card slot. However, many of my cameras don't use SD cards anymore. They'll use CF Express type A or type B, depending on the camera. So it's nice to have SD as I do use it from time to time, but I mostly use those other ports. So either way I could be with or without that, but it's nice to have it either way. Now they also said that it has a new display. So this is something that you may or may not have seen, but there's a notch, we'll talk about that in a moment. But the new display is basically the same as the iPad Pro display. So it's up to 1600 nits of max brightness with HDR content, a thousand nits normal brightness, and it has ProMotion. So 120 Hertz ProMotion, and it can ramp down to save power as well, just like the new iPhone. So all of that is included in this year's update. Now, along with that, it's 16.2 inches or 14.2 inches, depending on which one you get. There's no difference in the MacBooks. Both get all of the displays, all of the ports, all of the speed. You really aren't compromising between either of them. 
However, you do get more battery life up to 21 hours on the 16 inch. We have better microphones, better speakers. So two woofers with two tweeters with better speakers, and then also a 1080p webcam. Now, the odd thing is they're not using center stage that's on the iPad. So you have that on the iPad mini, where if you have your webcam on, you can move around and it sort of follows you around. Same as the iPad pro but it doesn't get that on the Mac. Maybe it's something they can enable later, but they did say it has a wider field of view and has a bunch of different AI features that make it look a lot better. So that's something that I look forward to, but I wish they would have added center stage. Maybe it'll come later, like I said, but then they gave it a notch. Now the notch isn't something that personally bothers me, but the problem is there's no face ID. So face ID is not in the notch for some reason. And instead we have touch ID in the keyboard with full size function keys. So it's nice to have those function keys back. I'm someone that didn't really like the touch bar. I never used it. I don't like to take my eyes off the screen and then look down what I'm doing and then look back up constantly. I like to just get the work done and look at the display. Also with those function keys, you can see that the backdrop of the keyboard is black now. So it's got this nice dark look to it. I really like the look of it overall. And so with that in the notch, the notch doesn't really bother me, but I really wish they would have put face ID. I've used windows. Hello, quite a bit on the windows side and to have face ID integrated into the top of that notch would be great. Maybe it's something we'll see in the future. Maybe it's not, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, as far as those processors are concerned, that's something I'm really excited about because I've edit video all the time and there's multiple encoders on the M1 Max that hopefully will speed up my workflow. Apple has said the in compressor compressing different footage, ProRes footage can be up to 10 times faster, which kind of obsoletes what the 28 core Mac Pro can do. So this is something that I personally can't wait to try out to see how fast it is and, and just get my hands on it. Now the M1 Pro is no slouch either. It's plenty fast, but the M1 Max gets double the, the GPUs, and you've probably heard a lot about those processors. So M1 Pro is great, M1 Max is even better, and 32 core GPU, 10 core CPU, and then multiple different encoders for different things that you do. This will be something I can't wait to just see how it performs with, say, video exporting and things like that. Now the regular M1 still stays around with the 13 inch version of the MacBook, similar to what's in the background here. It stays around. You can still order that and it doesn't get a price increase. The new Macs go over $6,000 if you opt for eight terabytes of storage. So you can really max these things out and they're not for everyone, but I do think they'll be great and I can't wait to try them out. Now, a lot of people are saying, when is Mac OS Monterey coming out? Well, Apple has said that it's coming out Monday on the 25th. So along with that, I would expect iOS 15.1, watch OS 8.1, TV OS 15.1, and maybe HomePod OS 15.1. All of those things I would expect on Monday, just based on what we have regularly when they release Mac OS, they typically release everything else. So I would expect that. And then also those MacBooks do seem to be a different design as well. So that's something I'll have to try. They're not as thin as the old ones. They gain some thickness. They gain a different design. It reminds me more of the MacBooks from before the redesign where they were a little bit thicker, more rounded corners, some different feet on the bottom. I can't wait to try it either way. And it's going to be great to have something that powerful that I can just use all the time, bring it on the, on the go, come back, use it wherever, plug it into a display. So I'm really excited for it. Of course, that leaves two more Macs left, the Mac Mini Pro or Mac Pro we haven't seen yet, and we haven't seen an updated iMac with these new processors as well. So they could be even faster in the next one. Maybe we'll have two processors, maybe dual M1 Max, or maybe they'll have an M1 Extreme later on. We're not sure, but we'll have to wait and see when they do come out with the replacement for those. Those are the only devices left to completely transition over to Apple Silicon. So we'll have to see what they have with that. Now, right before this video, I did a poll asking if you wanted to see this video, if you wanted to see Mac OS Monterey or watch OS 8.1 and over 50% of you voted for this video. So hopefully if you've stuck around this long, you give the video a like, if you enjoyed it, if not, that's okay. You can use the other button as well. And also if you want to see a video about Mac OS Monterey before the final release, of course, I'll have a video all about that when it releases to the public. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.